Mankind has dreamt of flying amongst the stars practically since the first moment we looked up into that night sky and marveled at the sparkling black curtain above us. It goes without saying that our fascination with outer space and what's hiding out there has been long lasting, but the idea of living up there is a relatively new one by comparison. TV shows like Star Trek and Lost in Space have played a key role popularizing the notion of space exploration. More often than not, this takes the form of a group of people, military or otherwise, gallivanting across the universe in the name of science and discovery. A far less popularly displayed trope, however, is the idea of colonization. Imagine it, mankind pushing out past our little blue planet for a new, better home. Maybe something catastrophic has happened, like in Jill Patton Walsh's novel, The Green Book. Or maybe it's just an opportunity for a fresh start, like in the movie Passengers. Sure, when we're kids, we like to play pretend, but I doubt anyone thought we'd actually colonize another planet in our lifetime. So it's not surprising that Elon Musk's announcement of his plan to create a settlement on Mars seemed laughable at first. The idea that man must go to Mars in order to preserve our species sounded like something straight out of science fiction, but it seems that not everyone thought it was so overly ambitious, because as his plan began to develop, someone funded it. So now, going to Mars is a real thing. Like, for real for real. But could we actually do it? Can humanity colonize Mars with our current level of technology? Is Musk's plan a sure thing, or is it little more than a dangerous and expensive waste of money? Stay tuned for the rest of this video to hear my take on the matter. But before we begin, if you enjoy the video, then feel free to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Ring the notification bell for a chance to be the first person to land on new content from my channel. Now let's get the party started. Admit it, when you think of life on Mars, two things come to the imagination. The first is a little green man chasing down Bugs Bunny in a comically tiny spaceship, and the second is probably something like Arnold Schwarzenegger watching eyeballs explode, or that one episode of Doctor Who with the water monster. No? It's just me? Okay, moving on. So let's talk about Mars for a second. The real Mars, not TV Mars. If we're going to colonize somewhere, we might as well know a few things about the place we're moving to, right? It's ups, it's downs, and there are certainly downs for Mars. The fourth planet from our sun and the galaxy's second smallest planetoid, this little red orb gets its name from the Roman god of war. That doesn't exactly make a great impression. A place of extremes, Mars ranges in temperatures from about 250 below zero to a balmy 68 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 153 to 20 degrees Celsius for those of us on the metric system. At least one half isn't so bad. The planet itself is a little less than half the size of Earth, but it makes up for it by having pretty much the same land mass. Mars accomplishes this, if a planet could intentionally accomplish something by being devoid of all large bodies of water. Zip, zilch, nada. There is no liquid water on the surface of Mars, and that's a problem, but not in the way you think. To be clear, Mars does have water. In fact, some scientists speculate that there was once a massive ocean covering just about a third of the entire planet, but most of what was once there is now trapped as ice in temperatures that would flash freeze you into a human popsicle. The rest has been stored as vapor in the air or in saltwater pockets beneath the surface. So how are we going to live on Mars without surface water? Musk's whole speech was about becoming a multi-planetary species because he feared humanity was quickly destroying the Earth and we'd be in need of a backup plan. So if we can't ship water up because Earth is dead, that's a problem. Musk solves this problem by taking advantage of those reservoirs we can most easily reach. The plan is for SpaceX to send up two unmanned cargo ships in the year 2022. These ships will contain diagnostic and filtering equipment as well as the drills necessary to locate the underground pockets. By the time the first manned ships leave Earth in 2024, the hope is that water will be found or at least filtered out of the air. So that solves the water issue. We could potentially find water on Mars and by 2022, or even after we colonize Mars, we might just discover the technology to get at that ice too. But what about oxygen? Mars' atmosphere is about 100 times thinner than Earth's. It's also about 95% carbon dioxide and only less than 1% oxygen. Humans and our livestock can't breathe on Mars, which means this cute little goat would die. It's hard enough to figuratively live somewhere you can't breathe, 
let alone somewhere where there literally isn't enough air. At first glance, that seems like a pretty solid deal breaker, but there are a couple of ways to work around this problem. One, we could all live in spaceships. A city of ships connected by tunnels where the air is processed, produced, and filtered for human beings is expensive, but not undoable. Plants grown on board ships could help naturally filter out CO2 and produce oxygen gas as a result. There's also the more mechanical methods where what little oxygen there is in the air is filtered out and concentrated before being purified and pumped into the ship city through already existing vents. Or there's option number two, crops. There was a time in Earth's history when even our planet had very little oxygen. It wasn't until more modern plants that took advantage of chlorophyll evolved that our atmosphere actually became the breathable gas as it is today. If we can manage to plant and grow enough crops on Mars, then we could potentially change the chemical composition of the air into something that's actually usable to us. Plants we eat breathe in CO2 and exhale oxygen, while humans and animals we live with do exactly the opposite. It's part of what makes Earth work, and maybe we could do the same thing on Mars. Okay, we can get water. We have potential access to oxygen. But what happens if the first few people get there and they realize they've made a terrible mistake? This isn't going to work. Humans can survive there. There's already secretly Martians. Whatever the reason, what if we get there and realize we have to go back? The problem is that it takes an incredible amount of fuel to reach Mars. Even using an HTO or Hamann transfer orbit where every two years a ship can use the momentum of Earth's gravitational pull to sort of slingshot into Mars's pull, it still takes nearly a year to get there. At that point, you'd basically be running on fumes by the time you landed. You could store extra fuel for a return trip, sure, but that would take up a lot of valuable space you'd otherwise be using for things like food or water filtering equipment. You know, the basic survival stuff to actually make the mission work. You'd be setting yourself up for failure. Thankfully, the solution to this problem lies in Mars's own atmosphere. It's nearly all CO2 and frozen water vapor. When you add electricity to these two things, it turns the water into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. I know what some of you are thinking. So what, we going to make a bunch of disinfectant? Well, hydrogen peroxide would be one possible use for the hydrogen part, I guess. But the thing is that these two chemicals together are rather reactive. I believe the proper word is explosive which is why this combustion is used as rocket fuel, so we can access water, we'll be able to breathe, and if things go south, we can cut our losses and leave. The only problem left, or at least the only major one, is a lack of building supplies. There aren't exactly a lot of trees on Mars. It's all just rocks and ice and sandy dirt. Plus, unless we go the terraforming route, then the wood wouldn't exactly be much use in keeping our homes airtight for oxygen conserving purposes. It might be something we could use eventually down the line if Mars ever becomes more Earth-like, but for the immediate future, or at least 2022, there are three ways we can potentially solve this problem. The first option is, of course, the ships we come on and anything we carry with us. Chances are each ship would not only hold its human passengers and their food, but parts for stuff like hallways between ships, small flat panels to make sheds, stuff like that would take up a relatively small amount of room considering. It would certainly take a while to build and build and build up the city into more than a small, simple settlement, but it would definitely be doable. The second possibility would be combining the soil and rocks with water and making a sort of cement to build bricks or set structures with. The process for making cement is actually fairly simple. Raw materials such as limestone and clay are broken down into small pieces and kiln dried. Once heated, they're crushed to a powder which sets into a hard single slab if it gets wet. As long as the ship could bring the supplies for the kiln, then we'd be set to make as many structures as we wanted in whatever shape we wanted. A third but less likely choice would be iron. The reason Mars is as red as it is is because the soil has a pretty high iron content. With the kiln from door number two, there's a chance we could burn off the impurities in the soil and be left with just iron that could be smelted down and formed into various shapes. It's not likely that this would take care of all of our building needs, but it would certainly help to stabilize any other structures we made. Plus, cool Mars iron sculptures should totally be a thing. So to recap, we'd have water, the ability to make or concentrate air, a way to get back or go somewhere else if we need to, and we wouldn't necessarily be tied to whatever structures we could bring with us. Would it be possible to colonize Mars? As crazy as it sounds, the answer is a resounding yes. 
Musk's idea might have seemed pretty far-fetched at first, but the more people think about it, the more likely its success becomes. People like you and me probably won't be able to go to Mars for many, many years. The chances are that the public might not even get a chance to go to Mars in our lifetime, and it's going to be a difficult trip for the first pioneers. But for astronauts and scientists, 2024 is just around the corner. So what do you think? Did you gain a better understanding of whether or not humans can build a home on Mars? Do you think Musk's colonization plan could actually work? And if you could, would you move to another planet? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching.